Hello and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Lauren Laverne and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Michael McIntyre. We start with a round call if this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories? Lauren, which category would you like? Politics, please. OK, politics is the category. The answer is one. What is the question? <laughs> is it how many chancellors does it take to put the shits up an economy? <laughs> is it what grade of haircut can Andy Parsons only dream of? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, is it, is it I've got it, I know what it is. Is it <laughs> what's God's pin number? <laughs> is it, let's be honest, when does life start to go downhill? <laughs> is it what does the Wow. I've Very got, like, depressing! Yeah. <laughs> I've got a lovely idea of your first words. What are you going to say, Frankie? <laughs> Bleak. <laughs> <laughs> is it what might a one legged man repeat to himself over and over again while marching? <laughs> How many times did Charles and Di have sex? Uh, <laughs> is it, in what year did Jesus have a holiday book that he never got to go on? <laughs> <laughs> is it, what does the average viewer of Jeremy Kyle think the alphabet begins with? <laughs> <laughs> it's not any of these, is it? Um, it's not any of those, no. <laughs> we know this works, is it's it, not any of these. In it, what it, year did John McCain first run for president? <laughs> What is the most popular boy's name in Spain? <laughs> there you go. It's to do with the Republican Party. Is it the average number of dead bears per room in Sarah Palin's house? <laughs> it's very good. It is about Sarah Palin. Is, it, is, that, is it how many times did John McCain meet Sarah Palin before he offered her the... That's absolutely right. Well done, oh. Hugh Dennis. Can I say? Yes, the question I was looking for was on how many occasions had presidential candidate John McCain met Sarah Palin before choosing her as his running mate. The relatively unknown governor of Alaska was a surprise choice as a Republican deputy in the US election where, despite her inexperience, she hopes to become the country's first female vice president. She's definitely going to be president, isn't she? Yeah, it's... Because like, he's 72. Worry. He's, he's a... the first president ever who could be assassinated by someone busting a paper bag. <laughs> Do you think, well, if he does get assassinated by the paper bag, that in years to come there'll be a film about it and you'll just see on a grassy knoll just various people? Yeah. <laughs> Governor of Alaska is the all-time big drop-off in a title, isn't it? Governor, really important and great. Alaska. It's like you've been voted the most handsome man in the Burns unit. <laughs> <laughs> Although, you're an international footballer for Scotland. <laughs> Governor of Alaska is the equivalent, isn't it, of being mayor of the Shetland Isles. Is, yeah. <laughs> She's a complete redneck, isn't she? Yeah. It'll be like Gordon Brown picking as his deputy prime minister the lead singer of the Wurzels. <laughs> That'd that be a bloody good idea. Woman. But does the lead singer of the Wurzels have a bear skin with bear head stuffed in her office? <laughs> She's a really mixed up lady, though, because one of the reasons that she's been appointed is that she is pro life, but obviously not for bears. <laughs> <laughs> but she's a creationist, so she believes that God made the world in seven days, and yet she's also a keen hunter. She seems odd. Like, Cheers, God, thanks for all the animals. <laughs> <laughs> she's basic, like isn't she? She's the female version of Rambo. So you're wondering if whether John McCain is thinking of going back into Vietnam. There's an irony here, isn't there, that John McCain spends five years in a Vietnamese prison and he's running for president. What is Gary Glitter, on the other hand? <laughs> do, you not, do you not think you that... You think that, time, that over time we will be going to respect <laughs> Gary Glitter? <laughs> Did you see the press conference where he introduced her? It couldn't have been more awkward and horrible. It looked like Joseph Fritzl and his daughter <laughs> doing an infomercial for a basement conversion company. <laughs> Thank you.
Why, how is she being tested this week? Her daughter, her daughter's pregnant, and she said that um, she is. I think she's like 17 or something, and she said, yeah. "Oh yeah, but it's okay because she's going to marry the father." As if that doesn't just make it worse. Yeah, I know. Yeah, she's she's if you, imagine if it, we were all married to the people we'd gone out with when we were 17. Like, how shit would your life be? <laughs> but she's also she's got... somewhere, by the way, in the country. There is a couple there of childhood Obviously, sweethearts. Obviously, that's dreamy. I mean, my mum and dad. They're sitting beside each other, yeah. going, "I've been with you for 15 years now." Oh, Lauren is right. I could be with Lauren Laverne now. <laughs> now if I did. The thing about being a creationist, right, is that actually being a creationist is the logical position, isn't it? If you're going to believe in a crazy, made-up religion, you might as well just go the whole hog and get right into it, right? Richard Dawkins, right, he's a very nice guy, but he doesn't understand the suspension of disbelief that's part of religion. You wouldn't want Richard Dawkins reading the Narnia books to your children, would you? <laughs> Peter, who doesn't exist, and Lucy, who doesn't exist. <laughs> Edmund and Susan, who don't exist, all went through a magic doorway that didn't exist and met a lion. They exist, but they don't talk, and they're not a metaphor for Jesus, who definitely, definitely didn't exist. <laughs> I, would, I would like to see a chain of events that would lead to Richard talking, <laughs> reading an earlier book to my children. Yeah. Who, who, who's in there with the kids? Uh, <laughs> it's Richard Dawkins. I thought you asked him over. <laughs> How does the Republican convention, by the way, how's it comparing to the Democratic it's convention? It's a lot it's a quieter. Wet. It is a lot quieter. Of, uh, they've scaled it all down because of the hurricane. Yes. Well, There's been a yeah. hurricane, it's come, it's called Gustav. Yes, there is, yeah. And um, he just missed, they all got everybody out. The, the mayor, I don't, did anybody see the mayor? Brilliant speech yeah. by the mayor, oh, yeah. Um, he came out and he just really wanted to make sure that nobody stayed, so he said, this is the mother of all storms. Get your butts out of here! <laughs> and next to him was a, was a woman doing sign. And he went, get your butts out of here! And she went... <laughs> you know, she, wha he, she whacked her butt. She oh, really? But out. He, he did it. He went, but out. And she went, but out. <laughs> I didn't even know if she actually did sign. She was just improvising. Just <laughs> I love the sign. It's Michael. You, you may have just been on some weird lap dancing channel and you misunderstood it. <laughs> they, name, sir, they name hurricanes alphabetically, don't they? They do. So, they go yeah, yeah. so the next one could be Hurricane Higgins. <laughs> 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 Oh. What he should have done, McCain, right, instead of cancelling a day of the convention because of the hurricane, he should have timed his speech to take part at the peak of the hurricane. Oh. He should have dressed as Magneto from the X-Men, <laughs> risen up into the air going, look at my power, America! Uh, I think it's only in extreme winds that winds should be mentioned, like hurricanes and gales. <laughs> Well, I just find it really annoying on the weather forecast where they go, there's going to be a stiff north-easterly breeze. I'm not sailing to work. I don't give a shit. <laughs> is that going to change my route to work? It's like, oh, I'll, I'll, if I walk that way with the tailwind, I'll be there in half the time. <laughs> it makes no difference. Yeah. On, a, on an apocalyptic note, why do some people fear that the end of the world is going to happen next Wednesday? Oh, because is... it might well do, oh, yeah, because they've created a giant black hole machine in Switzerland. <laughs> okay. A machine that could create a black hole that will end the universe. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is the greatest bit okay, of timing I've ever seen. Hadron like Collider, the Large Hadron Collider in CERN uh, in Switzerland starts on Wednesday. Or to give it its proper name, the Black Hole Machine. <laughs> <laughs> They've taken, they've taken all necessary precautions. No, they haven't. They haven't taken the necessary precaution of not doing it, though, have they? <laughs> yeah. so there's a one in 50 million chance that it could create a black hole which will end the universe. Now, I would argue that if there's any chance of that... But if my, if my kid said to me, can I get a train set up in the loft? I would go, OK. If say, could I get a train set that might end the universe? <laughs> I'd say, hmm, what about a bike? <laughs> So you'd they... prefer it if they got the protons and then cycled them round the tunnel on a bicycle. <laughs> the thing is, I'm sure they're going to find out some interesting things about protons, but I would add, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I think if the... Um... I think they've taken all the necessary safety precautions, it's right? Going to, it might create a I tiny think... black hole, right, which is the worst type of black hole, because we'll all get drawn slowly towards Switzerland, <laughs> and every week this desk will be, like, two feet further over there. <laughs> And then eventually we'll just look one week and Russell have, have been replaced by just the jaws of infinity. <laughs> <laughs> what 
Jaws had to enter the meat fridge. Fridge. <laughs> The Jaws of Infinity. I thought we were going to see a cow and chocolate and we'd be in Switzerland, but all of a sudden my eyeballs are sucked out of my face. <laughs> just for sitting nearest yeah. to the audience. What? You, you, you thought well, that... Where the first to go? <laughs> You're nearest to Switzerland. We tilted it around during the yeah. show so that you'd be the one closest to Switzerland. Well, this is <laughs> you bullshit now. You, yeah. <laughs> One's gonna die. No, basically... He just told me I'm gonna die on telly. <laughs> no, you look at on telly. Gonna... My God, I hope if the camera's rolling, it's when it just... happens. <laughs> <Yeah. gonna> be... <laughs> just him going, Wah! And, and clinging on to the desk, right? <laughs> but we <laughs> hammer at his fingers. <laughs> go! Go proudly! <laughs> no. Go, Russell! Go, go Brett. Brett. You'd be like that. There's more space on scenes we'd like to see. <laughs> <laughs> It's not going to work, though, is it? Because what they're looking for is a thing called the, called the Higgs boson. Yes. Is that right? Which yes, is a subatomic is. particle, which is, you know, lasts for a million trillionth of a second. It's incredibly small. Uh, the, most of the scientists I've ever met would have trouble finding a clitoris. They're not going to find that. <laughs> well, OK, they, they don't find the Higgs boson by just rooting around uh, and <laughs> checking on their desks. <laughs> which is, Hang on, sure there's a Higgs boson somewhere Have you somewhere seen that's there? your method for finding the clitoris? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll root around, and if yeah. it's not there, I'll check the desk. <laughs> <laughs> With that, we offer the points to Frankie Hugh and Michael. <laughs> now we play a round called Danger, Danger, Subatomic Joke Collider. <laughs> this game involves Michael, Andy, Frankie and Russell, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performance stand-up skills. We spin our news generator, settles on a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winners of the team I judge to produce the funniest stuff. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. <laughs> the first subject is television. Who wants to come in on that? Frankie! It's so, it's so patronising, television, isn't it? I saw a show the other day, and it was like how to sell your house kind of thing. And it said, if someone's coming around to view the house, remember to open your curtains and tidy up. <laughs> oh, thanks for that. I'd been planning on redecorating using diarrhoea pills and stencils, <laughs> then shaving the word welcome into my dog's back. <laughs> I saw a show for the first time the other day, You Are What You Eat, where a woman gets a trestle table of food in front of a fat person, and they have to pretend to feel guilty as she shows them their dream buffet. <laughs> Oh, this is terrible. Could you give me five minutes on my own here? <laughs> You've got to be careful what you say on telly. I did a cookery show, and it was 10 in the morning, and it was live, and it was the day of the Glasgow airport attack. And the presenter said, oh, you do topical stuff, don't you? And I said, yeah, like today. We don't know if that was terrorists or just Richard Hammond turning up late for check-in. <laughs> you don't want to have to whisk eggs for 20 minutes while a studio full of people hate you. <laughs> See, political correctness is all over television. <laughs> Apparently, on television, we're now not allowed to say fairy lights because it might be homophobic. <laughs> Apparently, now we've got to call them poof lanterns. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Frankie. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is modern living. Who wants to come on that? Andy Parsons. Now, apparently at the next election, we're all going to be able to vote by text. Now, I can see that going tits up, particularly with predictive text. <laughs> People voting for New Labrador. <laughs> the conservatory and the literal demagogues. <laughs> and I've got to be honest, I am no fan of mobile phones, particularly because you can no longer, can you, call a wrong number. Call a wrong number, don't you? Half an hour later, you get called back. I believe you just called me. <laughs> I got a wrong number. No, no, Sonny Jim, what was it you wanted to say? <laughs> well, I like at that point, I like to go, ah. <laughs> Brilliant. I get to make a dirty phone call, but they've had to bloody pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> that leaves us with Michael and Russell. Let's spin the wheel. Next topic is drugs. Who wants to come in on that? Russell. 
good laugh, mate. <laughs> um, I get offered drugs loads. I was at Glastonbury this year, right? And uh, this bloke came up to me. He's like, oh, mate, do you want some shrooms? And you're quite tempted, because everyone's like, it was amazing, man. Had a chat with the tree. Good guy. He's called Nathan. You'd love him. We could play racquetball Thursday week. What a chap. But <laughs> you know if you took mushrooms, you'd be the one who would have the story that would end up on the front page of the papers. Do you know what I mean? I killed a lollipop lady. <laughs> she wouldn't let me lick it, and I killed her. So... <laughs> So in the end, right, it was really embarrassing. I had three packets of Starburst just shoving them in front of my tummy, like, nom, 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 nom. And I was like, my guts totally gave way. And this lovely old lady came up to me. and was like, are you all right? Now, you've never known being truly pathetic until you've looked into the eyes of a kind stranger and gone, I've eaten too many sweets. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, John Russell. <laughs> OK, Michael, let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. The topic is grooming. <laughs> my God. Right. Um, people like my hair, though. I do gigs and people come up to me after the show and they go, I loved it. I go, what part? And they go, your hair. It moves around when you tell jokes. <laughs> and people find it funnier than me. And I'm worried I'm going to wake up bald with a note. I've gone solo. Yeah. I obviously don't need you. <laughs> I'm touring. Um, I never understand the end of a haircut, the, the mirror bit. There's this, like, this, this strange... Men don't want this bit, OK? There will be a back-of-the-head mirror. It's a mirror specially designed for the back of the head. They will fetch the mirror. Man is already thinking, I don't want this, I don't want this. And then they present to you the back of your head. It's a surreal <laughs> moment in life. It's you looking at the back of your head. For the only time in life, you see the back of your head. And I think in the history of hairdressing, no man has reacted at this moment in any other way other than... Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know it's my head. For all I know, it's just a photo of his best ever head. <laughs> I don't care. It's of no interest to me. Do people go, I love it, I'm leaving backwards. Woohoo! <laughs> Thank you. Points there go to Frankie and Michael. <laughs> Our next round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Alistair Darling. What does D I R B stand for? Is does it, it Darling is really badger? <laughs> is it darling indicates remaining buddy? That guy there. Oh, oh no, he's just gone. <laughs> it's it's uh, darling initiates rap battle. <laughs> uh, he's actually just said, Your mama's so fat she got her own postcode. <laughs> I know the answer to this actually. Alistair Darling has written an incredibly dull sequel to the Narnia books, <laughs> which are called Doorway into Reading Business Park. <laughs> Some children go through a doorway into Reading Business Park and they get a loan from the Prince's Trust. That's pretty much it. Is it Darling's eyebrows really black? <laughs> eyebrows? But... Yeah. Can't we add a little bit of artistic... In in no, not, it's not, it's nice not to spelling, you can't. Uh... <laughs> eyebrows. If you were texting it, you would texting. know what you meant. Yeah. Eyebrows. Why, Why would a really headline be written in text? Because what newspaper? How busy <laughs> are you? How busy journalists why are? Would, why would a Line involved with Badger. We're all having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Disco Inventor Resurrects Boogie? <laughs> this, this headline is actually <laughs> Darling's Inwit Robot Butler. He has an Eskimo <laughs> robot butler. <laughs> what should we do today, Tiktari37? <laughs> ice fishing. <laughs> no, not ice fishing, ice fishing. <laughs> Every day with the ice fish. Ice fishing. <laughs> I don't know that you're a robot. I think you're just a suit of armour with a tape recorder in you. Hi, fitting. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Uh, it Dara's eyebrows really. Stop putting <laughs> eyebrows with an eye. <laughs> Is it Darling in Recession Blunder? That's absolutely the right answer. Well done here. Well done. The answer I was looking for was Darling in Recession Blunder. In a weekend Guardian interview, the Chancellor said the UK is facing its worst economic crisis in 60 years. It's very difficult to listen to anything he says because all you're doing is looking at his eyebrows. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It's so yeah. difficult. You go, really? Imagine if he was giving you directions. You'd be like, yeah, right, eyebrows, said... eyebrows. <laughs> I can't work out whether he actually dyes his eyebrows or whether they're just immune to stress. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, Alistair Darling. Alistair Darling has sort of said, well, the economy's ruined. Yeah. And he's talked down the pound and the pound's gone down and stuff. And he said, well, I'm just telling the truth. The thing is, you're not supposed to say that, though. You're the Chancellor of the Exchequer, you crazy puppet-faced bastard. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to lie and keep confidence up. 
Yeah. He said there was really even on telly, stops, surely, with you? loads of like bags of shopping. Oh, I've just been out. Whoa, there's loads out there. You know, but instead, <laughs> he pretty much stared at the camera, played Radiohead's No Surprises, and just went like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's supposed to create confidence in the economy. Yes. He might as well have gone on Andrew Marr. And when Andrew Marr said, well, what are the, the medium-term prospects for the economy, he might as well have gone, oh, well, I'll just show you. And got a harpoon out, stuck it in his mouth, <laughs> just blown his brain out onto the wall. I think that's a fairly accurate assessment. <laughs> you know, but when he said it, I think, cos he's, he's really wasted an opportunity. In the interview, at some point, he should just have gone, we're doomed. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not panicking, are we? Do you know what I mean? He's got the worst thing for 60 years, you know, the worst fun, and we all just go, no, oh, fair enough. X Factor. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> to be that. fair, though, to be fair, we are the least qualified people to talk about the credit crunch, a bunch of successful TV comedians. <laughs> like, watching us talk about the credit crunch is like the Loose Women Champions League special. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that is I, true. I mean, you don't know I, how much. I mean, the show actually only last week was bought up by a consortium of Abu Dhabi millionaires. <laughs> we are doing yeah. really... It's good news for all of us, except you. You're moving to the one show. Yeah. The, uh, the... Oh, oh, that's vicious. <laughs> I've got involved in the credit crunch. I've been watching this man who winds me up. I went onto his website and he guaranteed me that I could get um, a better deal on my mobile phone. And it's got step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. So I phoned up my provider. I'm reading. I'm in front of the computer. I'm reading it. And that you have to go through to disconnect connections and say you're going to leave and apparently they stop you and give you a better deal. Yeah. So I go through to these connections and I go, I'm leaving. Cancel my account. And they go, OK, that, we're sorry to hear that. And I'm, I'm like, OK, I want a better deal. <laughs> and they're like, no, you... And they said to me, you've just cancelled your account. I was like, no, 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 give me a better deal. It says here, you give me a better deal. I said, we can't offer you anything now, sir, because we've just can't, you've just asked us to cancel your, your account. It's irreversible. So I started offering them deals. So, like, I'll have, I'll have less minutes, less minutes, more money. Give me my phone back. And I lost my phone. <laughs> By not, he has saved you money. <laughs> you haven't got a phone. <laughs> you can't now I've got this phone. new phone, which is it's a disaster. It's a disaster, my new phone. It's a camera, do? but I don't know how to use the camera, so I keep taking photos of my ear when I try and make photos. I've got a film of my, my face going, what? And then my ear going, what? Uh, what? I can't make phone calls. I've got 98 photos well, of my again, ear. He's saving you money. What gets me about the credit crunch, right, is how flimsy our principles are because everyone was buying organic food and going, oh, I want the chicken to have lived a life before I eat <laughs> yes, it. Yes. Now the first sign of trouble, I don't care if that chicken, if the first light it ever sees <laughs> is the little light in my oven. <laughs> <laughs> to eat any chicken that hasn't been brought up with 120,000 other chickens in a council flat in Middlesbrough. <laughs> it's also all these obscenely paid footballers, isn't it? You know, and they're all talking about, oh, I've just gone out and bought a 36 grand Frank Muller watch. For 36 grand, you would want some gadgets on your watch. For instance, I would want to be able to drive it. Yeah. <laughs> To be honest, if, if, I don't know who this Frank Muller guy is, but for 30 grand, I'd like Frank to be around at all times. I'd like to, yeah, to, to turn wind. and go, Oi, Frank, what's the time? And he goes, Ten past two, Dara. Nice one, Frank. Uh, <laughs> only have that in, uh, in Malta. You know the speaking clock went one, two, three, and at the time yeah. sponsored by... In Malta, which is a very small country, uh, my mother was living there. She phoned up the speaking clock. And somebody just goes, hello? And she was like, oh, I think I've got the wrong number. He's like, what number you want? She's like, I was phoning for the clock. He went, yeah, it's the right number. It's 213. It was some guy. <laughs> 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 Fantastic. <laughs> She said that once. She said that once it just rang and rang and rang and rang and rang. And then after a while he was like, sorry, I was in the shower, 3.32. <laughs> There's a thing, isn't there, in the credit crunch where apparently people are starting to cut their own hair. Oh. I've been doing it. I gave myself a Brazilian the other night. <laughs> As a man, never get a Brazilian, God. because when you get a hard-on, you look like a sundial at noon. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the points go to Frankie Hugh and Michael! <laughs> now we come to our final quick-fire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way to the performance area, please. I caught ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. OK, here we go. The first subject is lines you wouldn't hear in a sci-fi film. We've discovered an alien queen, and she's laid enough eggs to take over the galaxy. This writing, it says, Katona.
I am C-3PO. This is my cousin, WD-40. <laughs> All right, Chewie, you look different after that back sack and crack wax. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is my brother, Obi Careful, my sister, Obi Have, <laughs> my dog, Obi a Sport. Use the force, Luke. I've run out of lubricant. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's, uh, that's right. We aliens have learned your language by uh, listening to your radio broadcasts. <laughs> the androids are going berserk, Captain. Let's try switching them off and then on again. <laughs> <laughs> Start at 2171.6. Captain's log. Still won't flush. I'll try again later. <laughs> Vader, you look like a big black dildo. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, um, I've been repeatedly firing this laser at that alien, uh, but all I've managed to do is improve its eyesight and give it a Brazilian. <laughs> it's not easy being a Vulcan, Captain. <laughs> Due to my death grip, I can't masturbate. <laughs> 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 <coughs> Had that hairball in there for years. <laughs> <laughs> You're loving Chewie. I need to break into the Death Star's computer system. Who knows Darth Maul's mother's maiden name? <laughs> <laughs> Captain, the ethereal sounds being made by this beautiful dying creature from another world is some funky shit. <laughs> Okay, the that next topic is things you wouldn't hear on the radio. In that episode of the Hugh Dennis story, <laughs> Hugh Dennis was played by Bruce Willis, Steve Punt was played by Hugh Dennis, and the band was Shawaddy Waddy. <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> you touch my turnips and I'll fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> And now for a travel update. There is an accident on the M1. It's a good one, so hurry up. <laughs> There's flames and everything. <laughs> Next, a book at bedtime. Martin Jarvis reads the speeches of Hitler in a high-pitched girl's voice. <laughs> good afternoon, this is Radio 4, and I have a regional accent. <laughs> <laughs> Next on Radio 4, the dogging forecast. <laughs> Here on Traffic Watch, we're predicting long delays on the M4 where I'm about to hit my ex-wife's car with this helicopter. <laughs> and now it's the panel show where our panel try to stave off premature ejaculation. Yes, it's just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> This is breakfast with Tony Blackburn. I'm not actually on the radio. I've broken into your kitchen. Do you want toast? <laughs> <laughs> Next, more lesbian propaganda with Woman's Hour. <laughs> well, you've certainly stumped the Gardener's Question Time panel. None of us know how to bring a fox to orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Heart FM. The same five songs all day long. <laughs> 6 a.m. Welcome to the breakfast show. Who's up at 6 a.m.? <laughs> My wife's leaving me. <laughs> My dad didn't get up at 6 a.m. and he was a fucking miner. <laughs> okay, then that round of points go to Frankie Hugh and Michael. That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Michael McIntyre. <laughs> Commiserations to Andy Parsons, Lauren Laverne and Russell Howard. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Good night.
Eileen Klaus and Vic Reeves guest on Buzzcocks at 10, but next here on BBC Two, a new coach and a financial crisis. The comedy continues in the cup.